What's going on? Chris Mosley here. Today I wanted to come to you guys and talk about cages that you can use for your mirrorless or DSLR cameras. I uh, just wanted to talk about a few benefits of them, if it's for you and your workflow, because you know there's many ways that you can, you can handle your camera. You can be handheld, you can have it on a gimbal, you can not have anything on it, depending on you know what you like and what it is that you do. Um, real quick, I do a lot of music videos, weddings, tutorials, product reviews, and stuff of that nature. So if you like that type of stuff, subscribe to my channel so you won't miss anything and turn on your post notifications. But real quick, I have a Sony a7 III here. And this, is, this isn't this is gonna be really technical. This is gonna be really hands-on and just me telling you my opinion on um, this product, if it's for you, like I said, and you know, just handle it a little bit so you can see how it feels and if it's for you. I shoot mostly video now. I used to shoot a lot of Canon, but uh, when I switched over to more of a video focused workflow, I um, switched over to Sony because in my opinion, opinion Sony is just sharper. Um, people like to criticize the Sony menus and all that stuff, but it's really easy once you have your camera set up. You really don't have to go into the menu that much with the function menu. And you know, we'll get into that in another video, but real quick, I just wanted to put this together and show you what all I have. Again, this is a Sony a7 III. This cage was $69 by itself. They do have kits. It's made of aluminum. Um, the weight of it is 457 grams. Um, like I said, it's made of aluminum. It's pretty solid. And uh, the first point I wanted to make is that your camera is fully protected. So any way that you were to drop this camera, besides of course on the lens, the, the, the body is protected all the way around. You have, um, multiple mounting points like basically you can mount anything any way that you would want to on this camera with the uh quarter threads on it there's also um half threads on on here too if you wanted to put a handle but mine it happens to be quarter thread i have a top handle here also made by Spraw small rig they do have other brands but i tend to lean towards trusted brands just because in case there's a problem, you know, you know, you got good customer service because that, that brand is going to stand behind their product. And also small rig just makes a lot of accessories that you don't have to worry about if they're going to fit because basically anything you buy as an accessory for this is going to fit if you get it from small rig. They do have other companies like Tilta and there's a few others that I, I don't remember off the top, but I would go with small rig. That's just my opinion. Uh, the top handle was 29, I believe, and this is more of a simple top handle. They have a lot of different options for top handles, but, you know, I just wanted something simple. Um, that's easy. All I'm doing is screwing this in. All this stuff came with it. The screws came with it. Here I have my side handle, which is wooden. It has a good finish and a good feel to it. I wish it was a little bit bigger because I have, you know, fairly big hands. So this one is kind of small, but you know, that's just trial and error. You can always upgrade the, the handles on it. So I'm just going to show you how I mount my handle on. And all this is, you know, five minute setup, depending on what all you got. So it's a pretty quick workflow. This handle was uh, $39 on Amazon. So I'll give you a total once we get finished on how much everything costs and boom it's mounted that quick you got a good stable grip and that comes to my second point is that uh it gives you a lot of stabilization without using a gimbal now this gimbal is pretty you know quick to set up you know what i'm saying but it depends on what type of booking you have you know if i'm going to a wedding where i'm able to sit my camera down more often i have pretty much a lot of space i have a lot of free time i'll use my gimbal but if i'm going to like a Let's say I'm going to a birthday party or an event where I'm going to be moving around a lot. I want a smaller footprint, something that I can move around light with. I don't have to worry about sitting it down. I'm going to take this with me because I can shoot all day with this. You know, I can put it on my tripod if I need to. And it's going to give me good stable footage when I'm not having to move too much. You know, I can, you know, get the birthday cake or follow people around multiple different ways. I can grip it and, um, my third point would be, you know, they just, like I said, they make a lot of accessories for these kits. I'm just going to fully rig this out the way I would do if I had a booking. And then, you know, you can see how I use mine. Now, I don't typically want mine to be too heavy because, like I said, I want to 
a light footprint. I don't want to have something with me that's going to be cumbersome and it's going to make me feel not as creative because I have too much, too much stuff with me. So I try to keep my kit pretty light, but I have everything I need. I got my mic on there. Typically, I don't put a light on mine because Sony cameras are so good in low light and I kind of want to capture the ambiance. I don't want it to be too bright, you know, so I try not to put too much on my rig. I thought about getting the matte box, but that was just a little bit too much for me as far as, you know, having to pack it up and all that. This this right here is a follow focus. I don't use this that much, but if I know I'm going to be handheld the whole time, I'll bring this for shots where I think, you know, the camera may not be able to choose what to focus on in the, in the shot. Like maybe I'm getting rings at a wedding or recording the um, mixing board at a studio where it might confuse the camera or something like that. I'll go into manual mode. But typically when I do autofocus with Sony cameras, it knows exactly what, what I'm focusing on, especially if it's a person. It's just an awesome autofocus on these cameras. Um, I'm just gonna finish kitting this out so you can see it. I think Small Rig is offering 50% uh, off at the moment on their website. I just went on there to get some facts off of their website. So check that out if you are interested in this. But again, I just wanted to share my kit. And if anybody was on the fence about getting a cage, I just wanted to kind of clarify what it's for and why it might be beneficial to you. I actually find myself using my um, cage more than I use my gimbal just because I can toss this in the car just like this. And when I get to my shoot, I just pull it right out, flick my camera on, I'm ready to go. All my stuff is already on it. I don't have to balance it, nothing. It's already ready to go. So like I said, it just depends on what type of, of type of booking it is. But personally, I find myself using the cage more than I do my gimbal. And like I said, this is more of a hands-on video. I'm not trying to give you technical specs or anything like that. I'm just giving you real world reviews from somebody that's used this product. You know, I'm not a tech geek. I'm not gonna give you all the technical specifications and what it's made out of and formulas and all that shit. I'm just telling you how I would use it and would it fit into your workflow, that's it. You know, if you want that stuff, you can go to a different channel. This is Christopher Mosley's channel. Simple setup. Line this up. Again, this is called a follow focus. Also made by Small Rig. If you guys want uh, reviews of these products separately, you can let me know if, if that's important to you. If not, you know, I'm just hooking it up. And like I said, this is for manual focus. So if it's something where I need to pinpoint something, say for instance, this, this, this Allen key was here and I don't know if my camera is going to be able to focus it. I can turn on focus peaking and it'll show me, you know, I can really dial in on it and focus on, on certain things. So, yeah, I don't use this as much as I thought I was going to use it, but if I need it, it's there and I got it. I'm sure you understand that, you know, some gear you use more than others, but yeah, check out Small Rig's website and um, you can check out other people's kits, you know, just type in Small Rig cages or setups for whatever camera body you have. This is my setup. Works for me. Like I said, Sony a7 III, Rode Video Micro, wooden handle, follow focus, uh, Sony 20 millimeter 1.8. It's not a G Master, but it's a G. I think it's that G series. Excellent lens. Um, yeah, this is my setup. Like I said, if you want individual product reviews of anything you see here, or you have any questions about anything, just comment below. Subscribe. I'm going to try to get back to posting content like this more regularly. Um, yeah, that's about it. Appreciate you tuning in.